In this video, we will learn the eight baby steps for carrying out a hypothesis test. I have a tool that you can use that I've designed to help students to be able to follow a very step-by-step -step process so that it doesn't seem overwhelming. Of course, when I look at this form and try to put myself in the position of a student, I think, gosh, this thing just looks overwhelming in the first place. But believe me when I say, students who get to know this form and use it as a tool start to feel like they understand what they're supposed to do, and it's very clear. The form is laid out so that you can start by reading the problem and assessing what you know, which is usually sample statistics, and what you're supposed to test the claim of. So something we believe about the population and we wish, we wish to test this claim. Now, on the left side of the page are the steps for the hypothesis test, and on the right side of the page are steps for a confidence interval. When we're doing hypothesis testing, many times we will want to do a corresponding confidence interval. So this could be useful if you have to do both in a question or if you just have to do one or the other. Let's focus on the left side of the page for right now. We are learning the steps of the formal hypothesis test. First of all, we want to set up the hypothesis test. And this is a group of several steps that can be kind of simplified into one area. Just getting the test set up properly is going to determine whether or not the rest of your answers will be correct. So we start by first stating the claim in words and then converting that into a symbolic statement. After we have our symbolic statement, we can use it to form a null hypothesis, which is the default assumption we're trying to reject, and an alternative hypothesis that we would like to support. We will also determine if we have a right-tailed test or a left-tailed test or a two-tailed test, and whether or not we will be using z-scores or t-scores for our sampling distribution. After that, we'll construct a curve sketch, the bell curve, and on that bell curve we will label four important values. Two of them will be areas and two of them will be boundaries. And I call them the red couple and the green couple. So a couple would be an area and the boundary that's attached to it. The red couple represents your rejection region or the significance or the critical region, there are all different ways of referring to this. And the green couple represents your data or your sample statistic and where it lies on the curve and the likelihood of it happening just by chance. Once we have the sketch, we can use it to decide if we will reject the null hypothesis or not. The sketch shows us if we have enough evidence to do it. We can decide by comparing the boundaries and comparing the areas. And whether we choose to compare the boundaries or compare the areas, we will come up with the same decision about the null hypothesis. And finally, we will put this all into a conclusion about the claim. So now that we've looked at the steps, let's see if we can take these and put them in order. So the first thing was, to identify the claim and write it in symbols. So we'll look for that. Oh, A, write the claim symbolically. Next, we want to write the hypotheses. Let's look for that. Write the null and alternative hypotheses, E. After that, we'll determine what type of test it is, if it's right-tailed, left-tailed, or two-tailed, and whether or not we're doing z-scores or t-scores. So that would be identify the test tails and sampling distribution, H. Next, we'll start to construct our curve by finding the critical region. So that's the next thing, is to find the critical value. F, 
Okay, so the area will be given, the significance level will be given in the problem, and you will use that area to find your boundary. From there, you can see that step one, step two, step three would be to calculate the test statistic and then use it to find the area that's associated with that boundary. So that would be the next thing we want to do. We want to calculate the test statistic and the p-value. So we go to B. Once we have our two couples, we can label them onto the curve. So that's the next thing to do. Let's find that here somewhere. D, label the sketch. Label the sketch with the two areas and their boundaries. After that, we'll decide whether we can reject the null hypothesis. So we will reject or fail to reject the null, so that's G. And finally, we will draw a conclusion about the claim. So that's C.